Well, welcome to all the people that are uh, logged in today for this webinar. I uh, wanted to do first a quick reminder about vascular elastomer syndrome. Of course, you all know what we are talking about. Uh, this is a genetic a rare condition that is caused by uh, mutations in the COL3A1 gene with the autosomal dominant inheritance. Uh, and the, most of the mutation have a dominant negative effect and that is uh, quite of interest uh, in pregnancy. Uh, as we will see later. Uh, most common variants are the glycine substitutions within the triple helix, uh, in frame splice head variants and uh, insertions deletions. Uh, more rarely are uh, haploinsufficient sufficient variants uh, and the other ones. It's of course a disease that's characterized by uh, organ fragility, um, mainly arterial bowel. And of course of interest today is the uterine fragility during pregnancy. Um, the vascular EDS has a quite uh, a, a variable clinical expression, um, uh, mainly uh, intrafamilial and um, by a similar variant uh, uh, also. Uh, so can we go to the next slide? Uh, natural history of vascular EDS also has been well described. Uh, the, I figure here that uh, mo most of us do know uh, with an age of onset of complication that uh, is close to the 20s, uh, with over 80% of patients having had a complication related to vascular EDS uh, by the age of 40 years. Um, the uh, most common first complication of vascular EDS would be an arterial accident, and these would be dissections or arterial ruptures. Uh, the second most frequent one is the digestive, uh, the bowel rupture. Um, uh, it's a rupture of the sigmoid colon in approximately 25% of patients. And the third uh, is the uterine rupture uh, that has been described in 10 to 12% of patients. Uh, there are factors that influence the outcomes of vascular EDS, mainly gender with a more pejorative uh, outcome in, in young men. Uh, the ascertainment status, meaning that whether you are the first uh, person of your family presenting or uh, uh, a relative, uh, the severity is uh, different uh, because usually the most severe uh, affected uh, person of the family will be seen first in hospital. Uh, the type of genetic variant also has uh, a significant influence on the outcome of vascular EDS, uh, as we will see uh, on next slide. Oh, not quite this one, but it will be one after. Um, uh, yeah, I can just come back. We will uh, yeah, one more, go one front. Yeah, you would just have to take away uh, the French. Well, uh, perfect, thank you. Um, these arterial accidents, of course, will repeat throughout life. And that is a, a, a table that has been taken from a, one of our recent publications. <clears throat> that shows you the overall event rate uh, in a cohort of uh, 144 patients that were followed for over 20 years with an overall event rate of 1.6 events per five years and arterial events um, at 1.3. So it's uh, not that common um, in an overall patient cohort. Uh, if we go to the next slide, we will see uh, that uh, the type of variant has an effect of the severity of vascular EDS. Uh, you have on the one side the dominant negative effect, which is uh, secondary to mutations uh, within the triple helical domain, and that would be glycine substitutions. And you also have in frame splice mutations in the triple, triple helical domain that will reduce uh, the normal collagen in the um, extracellular matrix by over 85%. And then you have another class of uh, mutations that lead to haploinsufficiency, meaning that uh, one of the two genes uh, will be silenced, but the other one will be able to uh, work normally. And that will um, uh, result in a milder form of vascular ADS with an uh, onset of symptoms that is delayed by 15 years when compared to the uh, dominant negative uh, effect mutations. Um, and that is due to the fact that the, the collagen is reduced by only 50%, uh, whereas uh, in the other group, uh, the, the mutated 
uh, allele or expression of the gene interferes with a normal one, and that explains the important reduction uh, of uh, normal type 3 collagen. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, if we come back to pregnancy, um, there have been uh, guidelines that have been published on vascular EDS and that state um, that um, all patients uh, should uh, advise not to become pregnant. And these guidelines were published in 2018. The reference has been cut here because we are a bit too much zoomed in. Uh, but uh, uh, the text that goes with this recommendation uh, also says uh, that um, uh, uh, women should be engaged in the shared decision-making process when contemplating pre uh, pregnancy. So the, the possibility of a pregnancy was not totally uh, ruled out uh, in these uh, guidelines, but uh, nonetheless, uh, there was a majority, uh, was a, a recommendation for all patients not to get uh, pregnant, which, of course, in reality is not the case. Uh, next slide, please. Of course, for obstetricians and for us physicians, um, uh, pregnancy with vascular EDS is a high risk pregnancy. And that is secondary to important complications or a high risk of complications that occur at uh, um, several levels. That would be the maternal level, of course, uh, with the maternal complication rate at 13%. And the most dangerous one would be the arterial rupture, uh, dissections, or uh, the gravid uterine rupture. Of course, uh, uh, other complications may also occur or have been reported uh, as bowel perforation at the end of pregnancy or uh, spontaneous carotid uh, of uh, sinus fistulas. Uh, there are then the obstetrical complications, which are more uh, linked to the delivery, and that uh, happened in 48% of patients. Uh, that's uh, one patient in two. And that would be premature, uh, premature rupture of membranes uh, and premature labor. And all these two lead to a pre premature birth in uh, 22 to 31% of uh, children. Uh, when VDS patients deliver uh, per vaginal delivery. They have been reported uh, high-grade perennial tears. Um, and uh, on the other hand, for patients that deliver with C-section, uh, the most common adverse event is uh, severe bleeding or significant bleeding, um, and uh, as well as adjacent organ damage uh, like the bladder or eventually the colon. Uh, maternal mort mortality is also a big preoccupation in vascular EDS. Um, it has been reported uh, in the uh, late eight, 90s at 25%, uh, but that was a biased number. And there are more re realistic um, estimates have been published by uh, Mitzi Murray uh, in a large US cohort uh, with a mortality estimate of 5.8 to 6.4%. That may seem quite low, uh, but uh, it is still 300 times higher uh, than in the general population. Uh, illustrated here is a cross section of the, the abdomen of a pregnant woman with a baby. And of course, you can see that uh, the vasculature is um, quite compressed between the um, vertebra and the, the uterus. So you can easily understand uh, that there may be some arterial problems um, that occur during pregnancy in vascular EDS. Uh, next slide, please. So maternal mortality uh, was uh, very much overestimated. It's lower than expected. It's still quite high, of course, on an individual basis. Um, what is interesting in the figure on the left is uh, that uh, um, the patients that uh, delivered uh, with haploinsufficient mutations, that would be the, the uh, lower right box, the no patients uh, had 51 deliveries in the study, uh, but no um, maternal death was reported, meaning likely that um, there is a difference between haploinsufficient patients and patients with dominant negative variants. Uh, the, the figure on the right illustrates also, um, it's a comparison between uh, the life expectancy or overall survival of uh, women that have had babies with uh, patients that did not have babies and it shows no difference. 
that also suggests that that um, effect of having a pregnancy during vascular EDS does not precipitate uh, the disease. And that is very important and has been demonstrated by Peter Byers in this group. Uh, next slide. So if you come back to the type of variants, um, there is no reported morta maternal mortality uh, in the, this US cohort. Uh, we here in France have the same experience. Um, and that is, is a very important information and that may also lead to adaptation of uh, surveillance of pregnancy and counseling of pregnancy in these patients and uh, also of mode of delivery. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, there are not only mechanical factors that, in, uh, that have an effect uh, on arteries uh, during pregnancy. And I just wanted to illustrate here um, the hormonal changes that occur during uh, pregnancy. And you have uh, massive increases of hormones like estrogens that are responsible for arterial vasodilation of a heart rate increase of an increase of cardiac output and of the plasma volume, you have an increase of progesterone, which is a, a, a natural relaxant. Uh, and is, um, this is for adaptation of the arteries to the hypervolemia that is secondary to pregnancy and also favors relaxation of the uterus. And then you have ocytocin, uh, which is a regulator of delivery and uh, is continuously um, present throughout pregnancy, but which uh, is secreted in spikes during labor and would favor the contraction of the uterus. Ocytocin is also present uh, during uh, the early postpartum and, and during all uh, the lactation period because it would favor the contraction of the mama glands to expulse the milk of the uh, mothers. And as we can see uh, in the next slide, there have been uh, some experimental animal model data that suggested uh, a negative effect uh, in mice of ocytocin. And you can see on the figure on the left that uh, the uh, mice with uh, so an experimental model of vascular EDS, that mice that are lactating uh, have uh, an increased mortality uh, in comparison to mice that have never had babies. And if you uh, remove the pups uh, from, uh, that's figure B, if you remove the pups uh, versus uh, uh, mice that would be lactating, you would uh, uh, stop lactation. And of course, you have no more mortality. Uh, so that led the authors, that was uh, Haldin's group, um, to conclude that ocytocin has a del deleterious effect and that it can be corrected. Of course, this is an animal model. These are mice. Uh, it is not known if that can be extrapolated to men. Uh, there have been uh, recent experimental data uh, that have been presented uh, that did not show any uh, visible negative effect of lactation or breastfeeding uh, in human or in women uh, that have had children with vascular EDS. Uh, next slide, please. So after all this uh, presentation, I think we can uh, uh, get to the point of two misconceptions that are quite commonly um, are quite common about vascular EDS and pregnancy uh, is that people believe, may believe that pregnancy reduces life expectancy, and that is not true. And it has been demonstrated by Peter Weiss and his group. And it is also not true that all patients should be advised against pregnancy. And patients that if they are pregnant should be uh, terminated. And that is also not true. Next slide, please. It's, there are factors that may improve outcomes during pregnancy, of course. And that's what we uh, have to focus on. I think the most important factor is that uh, you must know the diagnosis of vascular EDS before uh, be even becoming pregnant. Uh, that means if that is known, uh, uh, dedicated monitoring and surveillance protocols may be implemented. Uh, delivery may be scheduled in a ter tertiary setting with a, a high level of security uh, for the patient in case uh, anything, any adverse events happens, notably an arterial accidents. 
Um, some uh, patients may benefit from preterm delivery by C-section, and in some groups, this is uh, done very often in order to prevent uh, massive hormonal changes uh, during delivery um, and to prevent the mechanical um, fatigue of arteries uh, of a natural or vaginal delivery, uh, not, uh, especially in patients with um, dominant negative mutations. Uh, of course, uh, if you limit the number of pregnancies in some way, uh, you would limit the risk of having an arterial accident during pregnancy. So this might be an option uh, maybe to um, advise patients against multiple pregnancies, um, uh, but uh, not forbidding maybe one or two pregnancies. Uh, that is very difficult to determine if there is a limit number. And uh, it, of course, is uh, based on a patient by patient discussion. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, if a patient with vasculitis leaders considers pregnancy, I think this has to be discussed uh, with the expert team or the multidisciplinary team that is uh, in charge of the patient. And uh, this discussion should uh, be done with uh, the experts, uh, the vascular, uh, specialists in vascular medicine or cardiologists and also with the geneticists uh, and also with the, uh, uh, with the OB team um, and uh, uh, to determine whether the risk is acceptable of having a child uh, uh, during vascular EDS. Um, and this can be best discussed with the patient and with uh, knowing the type of COL-3 one mutation that is present uh, something that is of particular importance uh, is the prior medical history. Um, for example, if the patient has had ma uh, major bowel surgeries, uh, if, it, if it has um, important scarring on the abdomen, that might be a, a problem for a pregnancy. Uh, most importantly is the occurrence of arterial events. Um, and uh, I think the aortic dissection is, uh, would be a problem to allow pregnancy and any defect or dilatation, aneurysmal dilatation of the iliac arteries, all, all the big arteries that are close to the uterus uh, um, uh, can be a preoccupation, especially if they're uh, dissected or uh, aneurysmal. Uh, of course, uh, the fact that prior pregnancies have gone done well is also a factor that has to be taken into complicate, into consideration to counsel whether against or uh, for a pregnancy or a another pregnancy. Um, expert centers uh, in Europe and in the United Kingdom and in the United States and uh, certainly elsewhere in the world are implementing uh, management protocols for uh, the surveillance of pregnancy, the arterial monitoring during pregnancy or as long as it is possible and uh, uh, the and insistence on also on patient education for potential emergencies, um, not only during pregnancies, uh, but uh, al also during the postpartum period, which is at high risk of complication. Uh, these protocols um, uh, have, uh, are not demonstrated to be effective uh, for a, a very easy reason is that it's a very a rare disease and uh, to, in order to demonstrate the efficacy of, of a management protocol would have to um, imply to uh, randomize patients to uh, a surveillance protocol versus no surveillance. And that, that of course, ethically is totally impossible to, to defend. And that's why uh, it's difficult to, to have some formal evidence on the efficacy of these protocols. Next slide, please. Uh, delivery is another big topic uh, in pregnancy with vascular EDS. Uh, there is no, absolutely no consensus on how to deliver patients with vascular EDS. Um, there are uh, multiple factors that have to be taken into consideration. And of course, uh, the type or the mode of delivery, it's decided individually for each patient, uh, which has his own history and uh, uh, own obstetrical factors uh, that are uh, are taken into consideration uh, for this decision. Um, I made a little list of uh, 
the risk of the different types of deliveries. Um, I insist on uh, the risk of arterial rupture during C-section, uh, which still exists and which uh, still may happen uh, in the postpartum period, uh, even though the patient has had maximum security uh, during C-section. Uh, I mean, no, no changes in, uh, in blood pressure, no volemia changes. Uh, there are other factors that may also um, uh, trigger an arterial rupture during the postpartum. So a C-section is not a 100% guarantee uh, against arterial rupture to happen. Uh, regardless of type of delivery uh, that is decided, uh, I think it is recommendable that all deliveries should be scheduled uh, by the uh, OB-GYN doctors um, because uh, it is important to have everybody on board at the time of delivery, uh, especially uh, that the uh, surgical team uh, would be close by. Uh, and uh, of course, you, you best can control this if you uh, schedule delivery, the delivery at a specific day. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, the postpartum period is uh, also a high risk period, uh, of course, because of the mechanical stress uh, the mother has been gone through or, and her vasculature. Um, it is, uh, there are um, huge hormonal changes uh, after delivery. Uh, uh, I uh, I shown you before the, the huge rise in, in your hormones during um, pregnancy that go up to 200 times their uh, non-pregnancy uh, uh, concentrations in the plasma. And all of this uh, affects um, the vasculature uh, very fastly. Um, therefore, uh, it is very important to uh, um, maybe hospitalize these patients a little bit longer, so no fast uh, return at home, um, uh, but this may change uh, according to countries. Uh, arterial workup is also recommendable uh, in the postpartum period as soon as it is possible. Um, maybe at one month, uh, between one and three months after delivery. Um, the arterial monitoring, of course, is not a guarantee against uh, the occurrence of a sp spontaneous arterial rupture um, uh, because they still may occur even though there is no uh, uh, detected aneurysm during this monitoring. I think the, the most important uh, sign to stress would be unusual acute pain uh, of the patient that occurs uh, from uh, after delivery, and that should trigger immediate um, a CTA CAT scan uh, to see if there is an arterial rupture in progress. So um, I think the first part of this presentation is over about pregnancy. So I would like to have a few words about prenatal uh, genetic diagnosis, PGD, which is also part of the, the problematic of pregnancy in vascular EDS. Uh, prenatal genetic diagnosis uh, is for our patient patients here available, uh, and I think anywhere in the world, uh, in, in uh, industrialized countries, um, uh, to determine whether the fetus has a vascular EDS or not. And the, the um, main objective of this uh, determination would be uh, to interrupt uh, pregnancy uh, if the fetus would have the, the mutation. And I don't think this is a, uh, something to do uh, only if parents uh, eventually want to know if their child has vascular EDS or not. So it is, has a medical reason to do this. And the objective would be uh, to terminate the pregnancy um, uh, if the fetus uh, would have this, uh, the, the call three uh, one mutation. Uh, next slide. Um, we also have a possibility of pre-implantation genetic diagnosis uh, that would use in vitro fertilization for a pregnancy. And the idea would be to transfer uh, only VEDS negative embryos uh, for a pregnancy. But this is a complex procedure uh, with uh, many, many requirements. Uh, it would require DNA of living ascendants. Um, it requires an approval, at least here in France, it does, for, of a, an ethics committee. 
Uh, it's quite a long procedure if, uh, if you have to go all the, through all the stimulations uh, and harvesting and reimplantation. Uh, it requires hormonal stimulation uh, for the harvesting of oocytes, and uh, there is a potential risk uh, of the occurrence of arterial uh, complications uh, secondary to this hormonal stimulation. Uh, it is not quantifiable, but it, it exists. Um, and this, uh, patients have to be aware of that. Um, the, we have made an inquiry uh, through Vascarn and the Great Britain about uh, uh, pre-implantation genetic diagnosis. Uh, the objective was to quantify the risk of arterial complication after stimulation. Uh, but uh, uh, despite having several hundred patients in this survey, uh, we uh, did not identify uh, women that have had this uh, procedure, um, uh, but we identified men that did this procedure uh, and for their offspring not to have vasculides. Uh, next uh, slide, please. Uh, well, that's it. Uh, I, I hope that uh, this was interesting and uh, I'm uh, very grateful for you to attend this meeting and I'm uh, all open for any questions that uh, might be out there. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Michael. Thank you very much for this very informative presentation. I'm sure a lot of people have uh, questions um, to ask uh, regarding this. So um, let's see. So uh, there's a question uh, that says, what do you mean with the tertiary setting? So in one of the slides, you had mentioned uh, that uh, it has to be done in a tertiary setting and uh, someone's asking what it means. You're on mute. Yes, uh, thank you, Carissa, for this question. It's a technical word to say university hospital. It's very simple. That means a high level uh, um, maternity uh, with the pediatrics close by, an ICU for children if necessary, and uh, you have all the uh, vascular surgery or uh, interventional radiology close by. But tertiary uh, means uh, university hospital. Thank you. Okay, uh, any, does anyone have any questions? You can raise your hand and you'll be allowed to, to speak. Or you can also put it in the chat box. I can uh, quickly comment uh, on um, pre-implantation diagnosis. Uh, we we have uh, we follow quite a number of patients uh, with this, and the, the, the question arises quite often. And uh, usually, the patients that we follow are being presented uh, with either the uh, prenatal diagnosis and the preimplantation diagnosis, and uh, somehow the procedure is so complicated and so long that usually uh, our patients tend to um, have prenatal genetic diagnosis, uh, uh, hoping that the child doesn't have vascular EDS, uh, instead of doing a pre-implantation diagnosis. Uh, so maybe that's why um, there are so few numbers. Um, I've, in my, uh, to my knowledge, that we have only uh, two families that did that. And in both cases, uh, the, the men were affected. And I know that uh, there are similar findings uh, in uh, neighboring countries to France. Uh, something else that I didn't talk about uh, during this presentation would be medical treatment um, to prevent arterial complications. Um, here in France, we use Celeprolol systematically in vascular EDS patients. Uh, 
in the United Kingdom, some teams use Celeprolol, others use Bisoprolol, um, uh, with uh, apparently with with good success. Um, uh, we do not stop Celeprolol during uh, the whole pregnancy uh, and during delivery and during the postpartum period um, to uh, for allow our patients to have uh, protection or maximum protection. As you know, uh, there are some drugs that are sometimes used like uh, ARBs or ICAs, uh, meaning uh, conversion enzyme inhibitors, uh, angiotensin conversion enzyme inhibitors, which are common anti-hypertensive drugs. And these drugs have to be stopped um, prior to pregnancy because uh, they are toxic for the fetus. Um, so, so this is an important point that uh, the usual uh, protective drugs that provide protection should be continued uh, throughout pregnancy. Um, uh, we do discourage um, uh, breastfeeding in France because of Celeprolol, because there is a fetal or a, a, a transmission of this drug in the, in the, in the milk of the mother, and that there, there, there is a risk that the child uh, uh, gets also Celeprolol with a risk of hypoglycemia which is a, um, a risk similar to all beta blockers uh, that uh, uh, is, a, is, is a specific protocol we have here. Uh, I've recently heard from uh, our American colleagues that they apparently do not uh, discourage breastfeeding uh, despite uh, patients having uh, beta blockers uh, not being Celeprolol. Sort of and meaning that they are uh, not recommended during breastfeeding, but the, apparently this is not a problem in the United States. And to my best knowledge, the only beta blocker that is uh, allowed or recommended during breastfeeding would be propranolol. Um, uh, but apparently um, this is not a, a concern uh, in the United States. Okay, thank you. Um, we have a question um, that says, um, is a surgical termination of pregnancy associated with higher risk for these patients, for vascular EDS patients? Uh, there is a risk, I, I think, of um, regional complications, uh, bleeding, there's a higher risk of bleeding. Um, uh, it's a mechanical termination. Uh, I think we, we do it here and uh, we, I never had any uh, significant major problem with it, uh, or, um, except for um, a lot of sorrow and uh, a difficult, very difficult time for the, the women that have to undergo this. Uh, but we, we, we didn't experience any uh, major complication uh, during uh, medical or interventional termination of pregnancies. Okay. We have another question from uh, Jess. Um, says, have you seen any complications from amniocentesis, amniocentesis or CVS for women with vascular EDS? Um, I, the complication rate of these interventions is similar to the general population. I think there's no, um, we, we don't have enough numbers of patients to have a, the uh, an exact prevalence or frequency of or a risk determination. You just have to consider the, the risk is similar to the general population. Of course, uh, the, the structures that are being sampled are um, produced by the fetus. And uh, if the fetus is mutated, there's a theoretical uh, higher risk because of course all the, uh, these tissues would be more fragile. Um, but I think we would need very large numbers to have a real uh, insight into uh, the, the exact rate of complications. Th there is another um, possibility to do this uh, prenatal diagnosis, which uh, I, I've shown in the slide is the, the cell-free DNA testing. And this is something that is developing and I, I'm sure that this in the coming years will be more, become more common. And that is the principle would be to collect uh, fetal DNA from a blood sample taken from the mother. And that is technically possible. And uh, we have done it for vascular EDS. And uh, this may totally take away any risk uh, of biopsy uh, in early terms of pregnancy to detect vascular EDS. 
Okay, thank you very much. Um, any any other questions? Uh, you can put it in the question and answer box. Yes, we have one. Um, so someone else asking, have you observed these uh, kind of complications in pregnancy, delivery, and postpartum in other EDS types, especially CEDS? Uh, I think uh, in comparison to classical EDS, uh, I think that it's, it's an, uh, another, um, there, there is fragility in classical EDS. Uh, there is a risk of arterial complications, uh, but it's much, much, much lower than for vascular EDS. I think the, the primary um, problems with the classical EDS would be uh, for vaginal delivery, perineal tears, there would be um, joint problems in the pelvic area uh, that would be the main expected complications. Um, uh, arterial accidents also occur uh, in classical EDS, but uh, they're very often uh, triggered by um, an important effort, a high rise in blood pressure. There usually is some triggering factor. Uh, so since uh, delivery is quite an effort, I guess, uh, I, I think, and I believe, uh, I think that is not totally impossible to have an arterial accident if you have classical EDS, but that would not be the first preoccupation of the uh, ob -GYN doctors. But still, you have to keep an eye open, and if there is unusual pain, uh, arterial imaging uh, is still possible or should be done. Right. Um... Do we have uh, any more questions uh, from our participants today on uh, pregnancy, on uh, prenatal diagnostics? Um, please, uh, the floor is open to sending your questions. Um, we've answered the questions that have been sent. So I have a question. Um, will the, uh, this webinar be translated into, I, I don't know, um, European languages? Is it possible to have a translated version for, I, I don't know, French people, um, Dutch people, yes, Italian it is. people? Yes, it is. It is possible. Um, other videos and webinars have been um, translated, so it's possible. Yeah, I think that would be a very good thing. Or even if you have just the uh, the, uh, the text written beneath, but this is a very common um, questions uh, we get, and uh, it's a, I think it's a preoccupation. And if we can make this accessible to to the most, uh, would be a very uh, good thing. We have a question from Claire. Um, are there any additional risks associated with induction of labor? Um, uh, answer is unknown. Uh, uh, why is it unknown? Is because I'm not an uh, OBGYN doctor. And I guess that um, you would induce, here in France, we would induce labor um, for a vaginal delivery in public insufficient patients. Uh, we would not we very rarely let um, hap uh, dominant negative variant uh, patients uh, deliver naturally. Uh, so I think if you don't know the diagnosis, you would induce labor and don't uh, ask yourself questions. Uh, if you know that you have a vascular EDS patient with a high risk uh, of complications, we would prefer to do a C-section. Uh, so you don't have any induction or anything else. And I think, and maybe it's precisely because of what you're asking is that the, the stimulation or the induction uh, is also a possibly at high risk of arterial complication itself, but not in insufficient patients. Thank you. I hope it answered your question, Claire. Thank you for that question. Any other questions? You can send it in. Yeah, I think any questions can also be sent in by email. 
um, to treasure afterwards. So no need to do that live right now. Very cool. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, if there are no more questions from everyone, uh, thank you very much. If you have any other questions later on, you can uh, send me an email um, or at treasure.lichiku at aphp.fr, aphp.fr, or at vascan.coordination at aphp.fr. And we'll be sure to pass along your questions and get it answered to you. Right, so thank you everyone for attending. Thank you very much. Thank you for asking your questions. Uh, we hope this webinar was very insightful and informative. And also please, um, please, uh, Stay tuned, we're going to have the recording of this webinar available as well. So you can always go back to watch and um, also hear answers to the questions that you asked. Thank you very much. And um, have a great evening. Or morning, if you're in the United States. <laughs> or morning. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.